You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help uh, others. State your name game. for the record. Jason Crump. Uh, who came up with that name? My mama probably. <laughs> so you never thought about changing a nickname or anything like that? Nah. So you just like your full government to be out there in the streets? Yeah, I'm good with that. Businessman, so you know, keep your business up. So where is hometown at, man? I was raised in Compton, but I was born in Dallas. Born in Dallas, raised in Compton. High school you attended to, man? Chafee. Chafee? So uh, they, they all say where you go to high school, that, that's where you're from, man. Nah. So you was at Chafee I, I, I High in, School? I was in Compton every day after high school, so that that can't work for me. So you must have gas money for that, ass, huh, to go to Compton? At that point in time, it was working. <laughs> so you was up there with all the essays, man, at Chafee High, huh? Yeah, I got kicked out. You were fights and stuff? Yeah, racial riot situation. Ended up at Diamond Ranch. So what motivates you? Was you into entrepreneurship back in high school? Always. So what motivated you to start your own clothing brand? Uh, it's a lot of things. I started out uh, working with a record label, Momentum Entertainment, my boy, Mr. Mosley. And then from there, I, I picked up the camera. Then I went into looking into videography, worked with a few cats, started a halfway business with a high school buddy. Didn't work out too good. Then from there, I focused more on the photography. And then uh, my wife, she a fashion designer, started working with her bosses and uh, seeing that the fashion industry, people were willing to pay minimum 650 for a photo shoot to brand their clothes with excellent picture quality. So it kind of like got me to thinking. Then I went to the magic show in Vegas and I was like, man, like this basic. Yeah, like, I, I got ideas. Yeah. I got ideas that could work. And from the looks of it, it's a lot of money out here for everybody to get. So why not get into it? So what's the name of your brand? War and Gold Clothing. And that's one of your hats, your logo on your hat? Yeah, I wear nothing but myself. Yeah, the best way to go, man. So what's your ultimate goal behind this brand? My brand is to branch off into multiple streams of revenue, but more so with the clothing line, I want to focus on uh, manufacturing, trying to get into the worldwide distribution, really. So what's the story behind War and Clothing? War and Gold, it, uh, oh, excuse me. War and Gold, it, uh, basically, it stems from a time in my life where I was going through some hardships, had a lot of solitude time, time to sit down and just figure out some things. And I came up with the values of what life really was worth and what it meant. And it break down to War and Gold. Willpower, ambition, respect, God, obedience, love, and discipline. The keys to life, everything you need. If you if you sum all of those things up into life, you'll live a full life and you'll enjoy it. So when you say this solitary time, are you talking about incarceration? Yeah. Now what led you that that path, man? Uh, former lifestyle, movements, activities. So it was, sure. it was pretty rough out there for a cameraman. Uh, at that time, I wasn't <laughs> even a cameraman. I, that, a cameraman, cameraman status came more so after... Like when when I when I realized I, I couldn't move in the streets the way I I used to due to situations that occurred that allowed me to sit down and find myself, I realized that I had to do something else. And I was like, what do I like doing besides making large amounts of money, capturing moments, helping people find a solitude in they they families? So like my my motto for my photography studio PJC is your your moments, my skills are masterpiece. So it's like I try to bridge the the facts of me not having a life that I probably could have had and then now having a better understanding of not having that life and then from going to school, like a lot of people don't understand how important photography is. In the 1700s, 1800s, you had to be rich to get a picture. 
or be a servant of a rich person yeah. to get a picture. So after learning all of that, it was only right for me to try to be the bridge between the lower class community and the people that could afford the seven hundred dollar an hour photographer. Now you think you think cell phones like the Apple iPhones is really messing up the game for photography? I know they put a, a huge black eye, but at the end of the day, that's where your skill set come in because me as a professional photographer, I supply high demand quality pictures at a guarantee. You'll like whatever you get from me as long as you allow me to work in my comfort zone. So you still steady, you still doing photography, right? Yes, sir. So still booking to this day. How would they come across booking you? Studio PJC, Yelp, uh, Studio PJC uh, website. You could Google me. You go to Instagram. You can find me all over. All you got to do is Google Studio PJC. So what type of advice would you give a young entrepreneur that's trying to find himself and find his talent? And the, the best advice I could give is find something you're passionate about, stick to. So are you in the game for fame or fortune? It's fortune and legacy is the best thing I could say because it's not about me. I got six kids. I got a wife. So it's not just about me. I want to build something. All my kids, my youngest, he, I pull my camera out. He jump on me. Let me see. It. Let me see. It. I have to tell him it's not a toy. It's an instrument for making money. So, like, let me do my work. I take my kids with me to photo shoots. Everything I do. So at the end of the day, it's it's about family. That's the most important thing to me. The wealth is a is a bonus because it allowed me to take care of my family. I always said this hustler represented the street hustler, man. How did his death his death affect you? It affected me for the simple fact that uh, I used to work club security. I worked several of his events. And to know that a young young man, a young hustler, somebody that somewhat has the same exact background as me could get took out on them circumstances, I... I'm not really into controversy, but it's an assassination. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot more going on, but I don't know the details for sure, so I can't really say. But I, I worked with him, talked to his bodyguard a few times when I was had to work hand in hand with him. So it's like it, it hit me kind of weird. It, it messed me up just to even see it. Matter of fact, me and my wife was in the car, and I just happened to pull my phone out. And it like messed up my whole mood for the day. I didn't I didn't post no social media for about two, three weeks. Even then, before I, I used to use his music as motivation in the background of my videos for my clothing line. Yes, I did, man. So like I felt offended to even attempt to use it again. Like I like just me being the man that I am, going through the circumstances that I went through. I didn't see me trying to exploit off a man's death, especially when he was instrumental to so many different elements as far as lifestyle, health, music, building up the community. It, it, it's, it, it hurt, but then at the end of the day, like I seen a lot of death in my life, so it's more so motivation. So does that make you be cautious of your circle? I've always been cautious. I've always moved in small circles, but I've learned that my circle's got to be even smaller because I'm, I'm going through a situation right now where I was working for somebody and thought they had my best interest and it didn't work that way. Oh, you want to get into that? Or, man, what happened in that situation? Uh, basically, I was head of security, caught a pistol case things didn't work out the way they were supposed to wasn't taken care of the way they were supposed to I ended up representing myself so to say didn't have no money for a lawyer me and my wife shit really my wife foot the bill for the bill it, it just like the way I was raised circumstances of the situation 
it was just supposed to go differently. Back in the day, it would have been handled differently, but I'm a grown man, I got family. So yeah. it's like, I moved differently. But I, I lost family. I, I beef with family members over the situation because they like, well, you usually wouldn't do this. You would have handled it like this. Why are you just letting them get away? It's like, it ain't about letting them get away because at the end of the day, I don't got to be the, the reaper. I don't got to collect because at the end of the day, I'm loyal. I do me. Yeah, I mean, karma's a bitch. It will come back, you know. So how was, what was one of your biggest mistakes on this journey of entrepreneurship? Uh, not paying close enough attention to prevent certain situations from happening from happening to the fact to where um, I would say I probably would have been a little bit further along in the journey. But then at the end of the day, I say this, this, this reign of fire that I've been going through for this last three years of representing myself in my case, went to trial by myself, studied. At this point, the, the probation department, the judge, DA, they almost asked me to be a lawyer because the way I handled myself. So it's like for me to go through all that and learn, I made my clothing line in the midst of that fire. They say pressure bust a pipe. I, I couldn't bust. I had too much depending on me. I had to figure out different ways. I couldn't focus on the photography just because everything that was going on around me. So it's kind of like, what do I do? And I'm like, man, I always love clothes. I grew up not really having what I wanted, so I always hustled. I'm like, man, like, I've been taking pictures for clothes. Why not make clothes? First, I tried to uh, get up with one of my buddies. He got a clothing line called Seven Saturdays. He like, bro, as passionate, as hardworking as you are, I don't think it'd be a good idea for us to go into business together because he like, that's my side hustle. Like, it ain't my main focus. I ain't going to give it enough time. He was like, and just from me knowing you, I don't think it'd be good to go that route. He's like, bro, you should do your own. Then my cousin, older cousin hit me. He's a successful firefighter. He's like, oh, let's go have. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's do it. He like, man, come up with some logos, names, designs, all that. I had Warren Gold on back burner. Like I said, it was a situation to where I came up with that. Yeah. I tried to use it for photography. It didn't stick. It had too much meaning, had too much value to photography. People wouldn't really understand it. They like war and go, oh, it's too long to spell. It's too much. It, oh, so I, I fell back off that. Then I was on the bridge of actually trying to do something else with it. And then I was sitting there trying to think of a name for it. Like, what would I call a catchy clothing line? I'm like, war and go clothing. That's stick. I'm like, dang, then I can even get more catchier at WNG Co. So it's War and Gold abbreviated. So at the end of the day, it all came together. WNG Co is War and Gold Club. It's an LLC. We, we in it for the long run. We in it for the long haul. No, no sole proprietorship. We we trying to get the, the right white way. collar money. We, so I take it you want to get it trademarked already? Uh, it's in the process. You can't beat that, that process, man. So uh, being the clothing line, man, who you think is one of your competitors? I don't have that... no competitors. I'll cut you off right there. I, I don't compete with nobody. I don't compare myself to nobody. I might get inspiration. But as far as competing and competitive, it's too big of an industry. Like, I'm going to do me. I'm going to come up with my designs. Whatever design stick, I'm running with them. And back to the drawing board, pushing out tech packs. See, like, we got an insider track. It's a family business. It's an insider track. Cause my wife a designer so we we know what we doing we know how to target we know how to focus we know how to get in there and get the nitty-gritty that most people say they run the clothing line don't I, I start talking business with most people they don't know what a tech pack is they don't know about uh the seasons and the calendars for when the clothes supposed to be delivered they're not doing their real homework so like that's why i feel we we ahead of the game just period because we ain't, we ain't even been selling clothes for a year, but we doing good. The clothes is paying for themselves. So is there a female line? Yes, it's all. See, the way War and Gold works is War and Gold clothing is a casual workout wear, a quick jump out the house. We do a lot of sweatsuits. We do a lot of yoga type stuff. 
But at the end of the day, it could go both ways. And then we break off into war is going to be the male line. And then gold is going to be the women's upscale line, like more upscale blazers, button ups, pants, slacks, things of that sort. So like we, we have it all planned out, but we're slowly executing. So how would someone go and purchase something right now? Right now, you can reach us at uh, www.wargoldco.com. That's wargoldco.com. So let's get on to the business aspect, man. Why is it so important to you to have an LLC? LLC is so much empowerment. Like, a lot of people don't understand what a corporate veil is. Corporate veil protects you. Like, a lot of people don't want you to know what a corporate veil is because if they know that you know you can operate outside of your credit and build wealth, you're unstoppable if you do it the right way. But what they don't know is a lot of people ain't going to never step out of that comfort zone because it's like, okay, I'm just making more debt for myself. And corporate America, you hear it all the time. Sally may just build out such and such or uh government federal government just bailed out bank of america 800 million whatever i'm just throwing numbers out there don't quote me on none of that but it's just the simple fact that like you hear the money get thrown around and it's like well why they give them that money they they get all these people money like don't they got money so it's like it, it's a corporate setup they they've learned like okay i'm i'm big i'm i'm on the uh, uh s p 500 i'm on the dow jones I'm, I'm on these scales. I'm on this level of business to where I'm publicly recognized. I'm worldwide recognized. And now I qualify for these breaks. I qualify for these grants. Everybody need to be able to know what they qualify for. You limit yourself by sole proprietorship or any other thing. Like non-corporate. Uh, what is that? Uh, not non-corporate, but um, non-profit organizations is the. Like I recently just learned about them. They're they're vicious. The the level of what they can do, the the amount of pay that a uh, a low corporation can pay its executives every year, like it's crazy. They giving money away. You just got to be able to set up and give them a reason to give it to you. So how will the youth learn this information, man? They got a a foundation got to be set up in order to teach like you gotta you gotta set a platform for everything same way nipsey did with the uh what is that the vector 60 or something like that vector 90 vector 90 yeah so he he did it but it gotta stem beyond that like because see like he he was focusing on his neighborhood and sometimes you got you could you could focus on the neighborhood but sometimes you got to think a whole lot bigger because a lot of things can stem from you just trying to empower one neighborhood. Like, like it's like playing chess or reading the 48 Laws of Power, understanding your opponent and knowing that you got to allow them to help you to the point to where they don't realize they helping you. They think they helping themselves. It's kind of like if you set up your grind the way it should be, your hustle, the money is going to flow on its own. Now, how did you come across this knowledge? Man, just I wanted to open a business. I have, I have businesses, but I operate all my businesses based off my name so that I don't have to go a certain route of registering them. And it's automatically, if you, if you use your name inside of a business, you can just file it as a, a business. And it's under you because it's your name. It's your, you're basically trademarked by your name, your social security, everything is stamped together. So you just file your taxes and you list like, oh, I got this little side business over here, uh, such and such. And I gross this much. And more than likely, you're going to get a tax increase or a payout, whatever it is. But you're still working. You might pay taxes every now and then. You never know. But at the end of the day, if you're making money, it's still hand over fish, you're exchanging, you're 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 involved in a process, and that's all they really want. That's why they tell you to file taxes. They don't they don't want people just out there, oh man, I, I made two hundred thousand last year. How you do it? Don't worry about that. 
Like they will help us understand how you made two hundred thousand. Like they legalized weed in California for a minute, it offset the weed gain. But then you can see now prices is back up, and it's like I don't deal in the weed gain, but I just listen. I pay attention because it's business. It's a multi-billion-dollar business, from what I hear. Colorado killing them. California is finna be up there. There's a couple other states I don't really dig off into it too much. But I do dibble and dabble. Like it's just like the uh, cryptocurrency. I, I invest in a cryptocurrency here and there. Didn't really do too good. But at the end of the day, once it do bounce up, who's to say my little stocks that I got ain't gonna triple, double, quadruple? Yeah. So if you can name one book that really helped your process, man, what's, what's the title? Um, my process. I would have to say. It's two books that I read together. I had to tip my hat to 50 Cent, 48 Laws of Power, I read that. Then I read the 50th Law. I reread it. I got it on audio book. I listen to it in my car. My kids listen to it. Now, how important do you think reading is? It's very detrimental. If you don't read, your brain limits itself. It, it started backtracking. It's all I know. But at the end of the day, all you know ain't really all you know. You got to expand your, your vision. You got to expand, expand your mindset. You got to make it all work for you. So at the end of the day, man, what do you recognize yourself as? I'm a businessman. I, I'm out here hungry. I got too many kids to not be hungry. So I, I, I'm focused on trying to get to whatever I can. Right now, it's not, it's not where I want it to be. So all I can do is keep pushing. Now, would you think you'd be as successful if your wife didn't support your dream? Not at all, because that's where I learned a lot of knowledge. I, I, I tip my hat to my wife all the time. I hope she knows, because I, I really learned about a lot of this from her. So it's like I, I have to give her credit because I, I didn't, I'm not really a fashion dude. Like back in the day, you catch me in some Cortez 501s and a t shirt, and I thought I was the man. Might have had a pocket full of money, but like at the end of the day, to the average person, it's like, look at that thug. And now I understand a sweater, a button up, a suit and a tie, if you have to, or if you just feel like it. Step out, you gotta, you gotta look the part. Man, my record showed me back in high school that you was known as Super Crit, man. So I wanna know how does you trans just transition from 501s, Cortez's, into this new fashion? I was forced into it. I had to. I had to grow up. I had to elevate. I had to level up. There was no way I would have existed constantly moving in that same manner. Now, do you feel like your new dress code, you get treated different? Most certainly. Um, Most certainly. So would you ever be spotted wearing a jumpsuit? Never. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, let's talk about um, how, how do you get to be the head of security for Team Trust, man? You got any security stories? Uh, that's an area I don't even want to mess with, bro. Like, I I needed some money, though, but basically that was it. Needed money, and it was available work. So, basically, it was a job keeping food on the table. Yeah. So, do you think if you was a blood, you had a better life? I can't do it, bro. This interview over. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, man, we talk about bloods. You going? Grind face.